So we are going to practice uh, sketching graphs for some couple of parametric equations that gives us ellipses and, and uh, hyperbolas. And we're going to try and convert them into um, Cartesian, the Cartesian. So a couple of pieces here. And in class, we've done a lot of exploration into um, what are parametric equations, how do the cosine sign. The cosine sign basically given us an ellipse. And, and the reason why they do is because we know that uh, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. And if you think about um, our ellipse, you know, we have our x whatever squared, y whatever squared equals 1. That gives us an ellipse. So if we want to sketch a graph of this, first off, we know that um, the x has been offset by negative 4. The y has been offset by 5. So our center is at negative 4, 5, which is great. Um, I have this, the cosine is multiplied by 3, so it's going to be a change of 3 in the x direction. So it's still a width of 5. This would be a negative 1. I added 3 to it. Still a height of 5. These should all be at the same height, about. Um, and then if I go back 3 from there, subtract 3, negative 7. Uh, going this way, it's an offset of 2. So uh, I still am at negative 4, but if I go up 2 from 5, I'm at 7. And if I go down 2 from 5, I'm at 3. So there's my sketch of that graph right there. Uh, let me find the, um, the foci. I know that c squared equals um, basically my offset in x and my offset in y, and they're subtracted from each other. So it'll be 3 squared minus 2 squared. Uh, so c squared is 9 minus 4, c squared root of 5, and it'll be in the direction of the major axis. So here and here, and if I write those points, um, notice this is negative 4 plus root 5, 5. This is negative 4 minus root 5, 5. And just, just for the record, the eccentricity of this would be root 5 over this distance of 3. Great, so there's a sketch of that graph. Um, now, let's do a sketch of this graph. Notice that tangent and secant. Um, I know that this is going to give me a hyperbola because if I, if I take this cosine squared plus sine squared, oops, sine squared t, and uh, let's divide everything by cosine squared. Notice that this is a 1, this is a, should be plus, this is a sine over cosine is tangent, and 1 over cosine is secant. Subtract tangent from both sides. Have secant squared minus tangent squared. Notice that that uh, tangent is associated with y, secant is associated, I'm sorry, tangent is associated with x, secant is associated with y here. This is basically like a y squared minus an x squared, which is hyperbola going up and down. So let's sketch a graph of it. Um, my x is offset by 3. Y is offset by negative 5. So there's my center. Um, up and down 2 in the y direction. Out 4. Oh, I switched them. Out 2 in the x direction up and down 4 in the y direction. So this would be the point 3, and it's up 4 from there, so negative 1. And then 3, down 4 from there, negative 9. There's this. Goes through those two points. So it's going to go this way and this way because secant is, is the one that subtracts tangent, so y would be subtracting x. Let me find my c value. I know that c squared equals um, a squared plus b squared, so basically 2 squared plus 4 squared. So c squared would be 4 plus 16. So c is root 20, which is the same as 2 root 5. 4 times 5 squared of 4 is 2. So that means that I'm going to have foci here and here. And this foci is at 
3, negative 5 plus 2 root 5. And this one is at 3, negative 5 minus 2 root 5. And eccentricity for that one would be 2 root 5 over the distance of the direction that we're going. And this is a distance of 4. So over 4, 2 over 4, so root 5 over 2. Great, so that's how we sketch graphs of them. Again, we can just read, like, there's our x, there's our y of our center, there's our offset in the x direction, offset in the y direction uh, for all of these. And then recognizing what direction it's going, um, if these had been switched, or the secant and the tangent had been switched, we'd be going this way and this way. So now let's get these to Cartesian uh, equations. So I'm going to do a little quick erasing. So this is how I'm going to write these uh, equations for these. I notice that uh, I have cosine squared plus sine squared. So if I could get cosine all alone here, so I'm going to take this x minus 4 plus 3 cosine t. Add uh, x equals that, sorry. Add 4 to both sides. Divide by 3. So notice I know what cosine t is. It's x minus 4 um, over 3. So notice I could substitute that into the cosine squared spot. Same thing with sine. I'm going to take my, my y value and solve for sine. So I could subtract 5 from both sides. Divide by 2. And if y minus 5 over 2 is sine, I can plug that into there. So here's what I get. Um, cosine squared would be x minus 4 squared over the 3 squared as well. So over 9 plus sine squared. Sine is this, so that would be y minus 5 squared over the 2 is squared as well. 4 equals 1. And you can see that there's a sketch of it right there. Do something similar over here. I have secant squared minus tangent squared. So I'm going to take this y and solve for secant. So add 5 to both sides. Divide by 4. I'm going to plug that into the secant spot. Take the x, solve it for tangent. So subtract 3, divide by 2. I can plug that into the tangent spot. So notice I have secant squared. So secant is this. So if I square it, uh, y plus 5 squared over 4 squared is 16 minus tangent squared, x minus 3 squared over 2 squared is 4 equals 1. And there's uh, my Cartesian form for that one as well. Nice connection. It's a great connection between parametric shape, the trig functions, and the Cartesian shape.